Hey everyone, it's Irene from Bay Wellness Coaching, and today I'm super excited to be interviewing Sanji Kat. So Sanji Kat is a multidisciplinary artist who does resin, yarn work, 3D printing, um, and now enamel pins. So hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your experience as an artist and kind of host a chat together. So thanks again for being on the show today. No, thank you for having me. I do really appreciate it. And thanks for working with my schedule. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Well, um, just to kind of start off, do you want to introduce maybe some of your kind of favorite art styles and kind of what you work on most recently? So I am best known for being a crochet artist. Um, I mix a lot of the things that I love. So a lot of people when they're like, oh, you crochet, what a grandma thing to do. And actually, I've met a lot of young people who crochet. Um, there's a crochet artist on Instagram, and he's all about yarn punk. He's like, I, he's younger than I am, and he just goes out there and he crochets a lot of similar stuff that I do. I do a lot of video games, monsters. Um, so I have like this little Eldritch guy from HP Lovecraft. We got like a Cthulhu. Um, so I just make them in a bunch of different colors because I like rainbows. Who doesn't? Um, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this game called Among Us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Among it is Us literally guy. all the rage right now. Like <laughs> <laughs> everyone keeps asking, do you want to play Among Us? And I'm like, oh, I don't really like accusing people of things. That's just like also lying. These are just like things that I do not do often. And I'm like, <laughs> this game like just gives me the shivers. <laughs> I am terrible at lying. So whenever I'm in the, uh, whenever I'm the imposter, I, I, usually get voted off immediately but i have a lot of fun um we also like to name the characters really dumb names that's real fun to just scream at each other on discord while stuck in quarantine it's it's a good time passer it's social um i've also made this feature so somebody i used to work with at shows was like he make a cthulhu unicorn and he is oddly popular so he's got like fun stuff of a pony with all the spookiness of an uh, evil sea god. Um, nice. That kind of reminds me of the troll dolls. <laughs> the yes. little hair. Yes. Uh, also fitting for this year, the plague doctor. He makes a really good pin cushion. He doesn't stand up on his feet. He likes to stand up on his back. <laughs> Yeah, cool. And how did you get into yarn work, like crocheting? So I saw somebody at my junior high doing it. They were um, an immigrant from Korea. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. And she made me like friendship chokers and all that. Yeah, she's like, nobody would really talk to her because she didn't speak English that well. And I told my mom, 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 I really want to crochet. It's so cool. Like, the school, at work, the school the school does it, and my mom would just insist that I would hate it, and she would not let me crochet because I was just going to give up on it. And then um, I kind of, like, forgot about it, wanted to do it in high school, and she did the same thing. And then I got into it in my mid-20s. Um, so somebody wanted – somebody I knew saw this My Little Pony uh, Friendship is Magic doll on Etsy and was like, Oh, it's so expensive. Why don't you learn how to crochet and make me one? And I was like, sure, I'll do that. And I did. And I turned out to be hopelessly addicted to crochet. Uh, if you hang out with me in the public capacity, there's almost always at least one skein of yarn in my bag, as well as at least one hook and one pair of scissors. I am almost always fidgeting with it. And it's great if you cannot sit still. It gives your hands something to do. Mm -hmm. It's like a fidget cube, but but more productive and uh, <laughs> like an art hobby as well. Creative. Right. And if I kept everything I make, I would have no room for me. <laughs> so that's kind of how the selling at conventions. Uh, actually, I started in consignment shops. So um, he is no longer with us because he has passed. But a really good friend of mine, his name is Arlen Pillay. Um, we were at, we used to go to parties and hang out all the time and he was an artist and he used to sell at swap meets and Frankensons and he finally got his own gallery at one point before his untimely demise. He saw me crochet and I would throw stuff away when I was done because I thought it was trash. I didn't think anybody would want it. 
He's like, let me sell this in my gallery and uh, I'll keep some money and you can have some money. And I was like, I'm not going to sell, but all right. And uh, he gave me my first paycheck and I was like, whoa, this is nothing to laugh at. All right, let's do this. And then another artist who was going into a shop said like, do you want, do you want space at my shop? And I was like, sure, here, here's a box. And then another shop did it. And then at one point I was in five shops. And I was like, oh, uh, this is getting a little crazy. And when Arlen was alive, he would always go like, you should do shows on your own. So that way you're not paying me to sell your stuff. Like you sell your stuff better than anybody else because you are passionate about it. And I was just always like, mm-hmm. like wanting to hide and just be shot. I, uh, and then when he passed away, that was like kind of a promise that I made. It's something he always kind of pushed me to do. Um, I wish I would have done it while he was alive, but alas, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that friend basically inspired you to get your art out there in front of other people. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what you're doing to this day. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how you got started at conventions. Like, how's your experience been selling at conventions? My very, very first con was one of my favorite cons. It was Weird Con 2017. And uh, it was three months after Arlen had passed. And I I paid a lot of, like, so you have to pay to be at these shows, first of all. So I paid to be at the show. I was going to be happy if I made my money back. I made my money back five times over what I paid to be there. So I was just blown away. Um, I was at a bat- black. It was a tabletop, like, role-playing game convention. So, um I was a little irresponsible and I closed down my shop a few times to go play, um, which don't do that. You paid to be there. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, I took my, my sister was there and we did some escape rooms and that was like super fun. Um, They're like D&D themed like escape rooms. And I really hope they have that convention again because like they have their websites and stuff, but they haven't announced another show since 2017. And I met some really amazing people there. I met, my friends Danny and Candy, they used to run Geek Meet, which was an event in downtown Fullerton that has also since like since died out. So a lot of these like shows they pop up and die and pop up and die. So you just have to network and say like, hey, what's your next show? And then like go and find it and submit your applications or like see if you can get into either Artist Alley and sometimes when Artist Alley is sold out you have to weigh your options. Like, do you want to bite the bullet and pay extra to be in the dealer's hall? Because that one's always more expensive. Mm, Sorry, gotcha. Chat. No worries, no worries. Um, <laughs> if you need to take a look at it, no worries at no, all. <laughs> I, I do not. I am not on the clock. Um, somebody else is on the clock. Uh, we've been doing a lot of overtime. I did 105 hours in two weeks, and I just need to not work my day job for a little bit. I need me time, and this is me time. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, well, that's good that you have kind of a, a good separation. And that kind of kind of putting me towards to kind of help understand, like, a lot of artists, they have like a full time job or a day job that kind of helps them be able to afford supplies or be able to continue to do their art as like their passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, how do you navigate that as an artist? So um, the nice thing about having a day job is, you know, you're going to get money. And you know roughly about how much money you're going to get. Like if you work hourly, you know for sure, oh, I work 20 hours and I make $20 an hour. So I'm definitely going to get this much to take home. Or if your salary, every month I make, you know, $4,000. I will always have that $4,000 every single month. When you do stuff like this, there is no guarantee. You don't sell the thing. You don't make money. So it's pretty risky for sure and you have to figure out it's rewarding don't get me wrong it's rewarding and it's worth it however I have made some life commitments that make it where I need the guaranteed money to be able to do what I need Mm -hmm. so I usually stretch myself very thin by working a day job doing this and everything else that I do (laughs) yeah That makes total sense. Um, Yeah. And not to knock anyone who has a day job that they need to pay the bills. Like even if you have an interest that you really enjoy, 
the fact that you still need to support yourself or support your family, support whoever, your pets, like that is a lot of work. And we live in a very capitalistic society where it's very hard to just follow your passion and just like hope it lands, especially in something where you're doing a lot of gigs or you're doing a lot of events. Like it's not a stable paycheck and then you have to pay for a lot of your own things, pay for your own materials before you even sell a product. So there's a lot of money that goes into it. Um, so that's great that you have a day job that can help give you the stability you need. Um, just kind of in terms of maybe some of your favorite pieces, do you want to share a little bit about maybe your favorite pieces of the different types of mediums that you practice? So um, usually I, am a, I, I have a day job, usually 40 plus hours a week, uh, and then almost every weekend I have a convention. COVID has definitely changed that. I'm not doing conventions anymore. And I always kind of considered it like the big boy thing to do at the conventions was to have enamel pins. And I just never sat there and like designed some. So I took advantage of that. And uh, I decided to be very selfish. I have a pet. Um, unfortunately, they are not able to stay with me during COVID. I, I, was, I moved to a small temporary housing for a very short amount of time the day before lockdown happened. So lockdown is preventing me from getting my pet back. He is an umbrella cockatoo named Sydney. And obviously being interviewed by the wonderful Irene, I'm queer. I made pride flag birds and I have them right here. So let me grab these. So I have by pride. And then here's my trans pride. I have some wonderful brothers and sisters who are who identify as that and then the all-encompassing rainbow uh and then and your your own bird sydney inspired these enamel pins correct he's an umbrella cockatoo yeah and so it's an umbrella cockatoo um umbrella cockatoos are all white they don't have colorful wings but i decided to match the two together in a very fun way so i made his wings the price flag so, um, and then this one is, this one's tan. The colors weren't as vibrant as I was hoping, but they're still pretty good. Like I like my manufacturer a lot. Um, I got, they, they let me get little heart backers and then it's hard to catch on camera, but it has my logo on there too. It says Sanji Cat on all of them. Nice. Awesome. And was it hard for you to find your uh, manufacturer? So I've been doing conventions for over three years now and I networked and I just luckily one of uh, the, one of my friends who I made through the convention told me, Hey, this is, this is manufacturer I go through and also just chatting. It's like, Hey, where do you get your stickers made? Where do you get your bumper stickers made? Um, oh, you're a vinyl cutter. Do you own a vinyl cutter? Do you own a cricket machine or do you like outsource this? Um, and just like, because there's a lot of downtime at conventions. Like, like they, it comes in waves. Like, you'll be swamped, and it'll be dead. Chat with your neighbors. See what's up with them. Like, you don't know, like, if you're going to find a lifelong friend or if you're going to be able to network. Sometimes, like, the convention tables are very expensive. So it's like, hey, um, I need somebody to come with me. Like, do you want to, like, if it's a $500 table, you want to pay $250. i will get three feet. You get three feet. And that way we can go to the bathroom <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> and not worry about somebody stealing merch or stealing money or like, Hey, I, I'm getting antsy. I need to go take a walk mm -hmm. and watch my stuff. So yeah. That makes nice total have, sense. Like, that yeah. I feel like you could definitely make a lot of friends and I could definitely understand where that waves come from. Like if you're, you know, just hanging out while the keynote speaker is talking and everyone else is going to see the keynote speaker, you're probably just going to be chilling. Um, if you are not just going to go view it yourself for a little bit, like, hey, can you watch over my stuff while you just like go take a peek or something right. like that? That'd be really nice. Yeah. Right. Um, and then <laughs> uh, here's the problem. I like it. I like other people's designs too. I'm actually uh, somebody I met at a convention. I met her. I want to. I want to say Long Beach Comic Con. Not, obviously not this year, but a while back. I met this girl named um, uh, Lay, and she designed this. So she cut she cut a thing, and it's a stamp. It's a custom custom stamp. So 
I kind of always like see other stuff and it's like, oh, I like this, oh, I like that. Um, I've art, I've traded my art for other people's art because it's like, oh, I can make another, I can make another Among Us creature, but I definitely can't make this shirt. Mm -hmm. Or I have a bunch of pins hanging up above my light bulb. Those are almost all. Mm, every single one of those is not, is from an independent designer, except I have a Tobit one. That one's meant. That one's from a manufacturer. Mm. Like that's from like a that's like an official like anime one. But everything else is like independent design. Cool. That's awesome. So it's nice that you are able to network with each other, kind of share like tips, best practices, even like figure out what what manufacturers you end up using. Um, is, was there a favorite con that you went to? So like a favorite convention for those who are a little bit um, unfamiliar with the lingo, but was there like a convention that you, that really stood out in your mind as being one that was like super cool? I've done one out of state convention and that was Crypticon in Seattle, Washington. It was also my very first horror convention. Um, I've done two horror shows and they, I, I go so underprepared every time I'm there. Everybody always wants my stuff. And like, I just need to not sleep for the month before because it's well received because I make, um, make little, little goats. These goats do really well at horror conventions, obviously like the Kutsus do really well at these kinds of shows. Um, so like these are like what some of my more expensive pieces and I got like these little fun pieces. I got like this, you know, it's spooky month. So I got an eyeball. With so. the retina still, uh, what is that? Optic nerve still attached? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it looks like it's like coming out. Um, yeah. I had my ears pierced. I could probably wear them as earrings, but I don't have my ears pierced. Yeah. That might even stretch out your ear depending on how heavy it is. Oh, it's not very heavy at all. Like I oh. Right there, it's fine. Um, that looks weird. <laughs> Just a casual eyeball hanging from your ear. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, like, uh, I'm a fan of the popular YouTuber Jacks Up the Guy, and so like every now and again, I'll make a his his logo is like an eyeball, but instead of white, it's green because it's septic. So um, sometimes I'll like play with that. Uh, also, throwing things at people. Don't throw things at people. But I've I've done that. Got uh, like little cute whales. And because it's Washington, I made a bunch of orcas and they went like crazy because Washington loves orcas. So like always like kind of curate to your, to your show. So it's like I've done video game conventions and obviously I want to make more Pokemon, um, like Kingdom Hearts guys. Um, but I just really like the horror scene because it's something I'm, I'm personally interested in video games, but I really also like horror. So there's that. Um, I should probably show you some of my resin pieces. Mm -hmm. So this is... This mold is from um, a mold designer in Italy that I got. So it's a little Cthulhu that I put a magnet on the back so it can go on your refrigerator. I have a whiteboard to help me with my day job, so I do a lot of that. Here's another magnet. So when I first learned how to do resin, um, like I did, so these are like the cabochon eyes. Uh, and then I like was experimenting with mica powders and glitters to get this really interesting effect. And then later on, I started with, um, there's an effect that you can do with resin where you take inks. Um, you can take inks and they, like different inks weigh different amounts. So you get these like fun clouds. And I'm hoping my camera's gonna get these because this is, this is one of the ink casted pieces. So you see, you get these like fun, like clouds because the white is very heavy and so it pulls the other colors down and it gives it this like mushroom cloud effect and then yeah like, it looks like what i imagine kind of the space <laughs> far away galaxies look like yeah i was a big tumblr user back in the day and tumblr really liked that and so like you can kind of see it more here you get like a stained glass look if it if you can get the light through it so you can see at that stained glass look this mm -hmm. is again the ink but because it's thin, it's like um, you pour the mold, like this is the top of the mold, and so the ink didn't quite sink down all the way because I didn't put enough white, so it didn't bring the ink down. So I have like these fun coffins. Um, 
This is ink with specks of the mica powder to make it look like stars. And it's like a D20 piece that looks like a D20 coming out of your refrigerator. So you can see the, the ink splotches right there. So that's always really fun. And then um, obviously everybody's heard of the uh, fun website called Wish. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, that's they make all kinds of really fun, like they sell like the most random, random, random things and like you'd never expect. So I found Mickey Mouse glitter on Wish, like little pieces of glitter that are shaped like Mickey Mouse's. So I put the Mickey glitter in the Pikachu because I thought it would be funny. And of course, I can't remember how to pick that up, but. So you mix the um, resin starts off as a liquid. And then um, I use I use epoxy two part 24 hour to cure. Um, you can also use UV, but I have not done the UV before. And then here, this is um, this right here is the mica powder. And then there's nothing in the resin. But when there's nothing in the resin, you can see the magnet very clearly through. And you can also see um, this is one of my early pieces. It's got a lot of bubbles in the back, a lot of air bubbles. So you can get rid of that by slowly pouring and using a heat gun to pop those air bubbles. This is also a resin. Nice. And how did you learn to do all these techniques? Was it something you could just kind of look up online or did you learn from other people? Like, how did you learn all these like miscellaneous techniques? YouTube. 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 Nice. Wow. Uh, I, I learned how to crochet off of YouTube. I learned how to do resin art on YouTube. Um, there are people on YouTube and TikTok who actually talk about if you want to find a manufacturer, uh, if you want to find any manufacturer for anything, there is this really great app called Alibaba app mm -hmm. and it will connect you with Chinese manufacturers. Like literally the app, like you type in what you want and yeah. it'll give you a list of different manufacturers who make that thing. So if I wanted to do, if, if I had a web comic and I wanted to make a plushie, I can really type in plushie. You can see samples of their work and it's fantastic. So that's how my friend who I networked found her manufacturer. And then she just told me who she went through and then she just gave me their direct info. And I've spent way too long on Alibaba just looking at what can be made. It's like, whoa, I can make a custom pop socket. What am I going to put on it? <laughs> Yeah, gosh, I've spoken with a few other people who started their business through like Alibaba, finding manufacturers and like working back and forth, sending samples, like, you know, waiting for the delivery, then sending like making the suggestions and then getting the new product and then kind of reselling it here. So it's kind of like you're skipping out on the Amazon middleman who's kind of like dipping into, I guess, your profits because um, they do the right. repackaging or reshipping. Um, so that's pretty that's pretty cool. I'm glad to hear that it's worked out well for you. Is it ever hard to communicate with them? So um, I am speaking with people who English is their second language, and I've gotten some really fun messages, but other artists are also working with different Chinese manufacturers, so it's, it's frustrating in the moment, but when it's all over, it's a fun story you can laugh at. Um, my legal name is Sherry very closely spelt to the English word sheriff. And so a lot of times my emails will go, hello, sheriff. So um, I've corrected them, but I've given up at this point because almost every email is addressed to sheriff. And so it's become a joke. And uh, I have been given a little plastic sheriff star a couple of times from other people because they're like, here you go. And it's like, those are fun. Little... <laughs> they just think it's like a cute gift to give to you. Like, oh, here, <laughs> it's the same name. <laughs> If you add two Fs to my name, it becomes Sheriff. Yeah. That's so sad. obviously they're using Google Translate and they just assume, Google Translate assumes that they want to use a word, not a proper noun. So mm -hmm. it becomes Sheriff. That's so funny. I'm not oh. quite sure what I'm the Sheriff of though. Yeah. You're the Sheriff of your own art collective. Oh well, yeah. You're Thank doing you. a great job. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so is there any other things that really inspire you to make your art? Is it like a show you watched and you're like, wow, I love the show. I want to make some art related to it. Like, what are some of the things that you draw inspiration from? A lot of like video games, a lot of monsters, a lot of like 
my own things, like obviously like my bird pin being like a pride bird. Um, you know, I made this raven skull because I'm, I'm I'm obsessed with birds. Birds, birds are great. If you come, if you come and you find me and you start showing me bird memes or bird pictures, uh, you, you you're good in my book, man. Um, that's like a real good way to like start a conversation with me. Uh, like reptile, like I got really into reptiles first, and then like I evolved into birds. I guess uh, wanted wanted a dinosaur as a kid. I guess like birds are like the closest thing I can get to a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Um, but pretty much like things that I'm into inspire me. And I've also get inspired by the rabbit hole that is Pinterest. As I'll see other people's projects. And I was like, I can make that. Oh, I like that, but I don't like the way they did that. So I'm still definitely going to make that, but I'm not going to do that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just kind of drawing on whatever inspirations that you see in life, whether it's like a show you like or a game you like, you just kind of, hey, I'm going to try to make that and you just give it a go. What happens mm-hmm. to some of like uh, your products that you're like, oh, I'm not really happy with it. <laughs> do, can you edit them like with crocheting? Like, can you like undo or do you kind of just like, it's kind of how it ended? <laughs> So it really depends on that because it's like, um, I'm just trying to think of like, is there something? Oh yeah, this guy. So he's technically messed up. And I don't know if you can tell as a person who didn't work on the piece, how this is messed up. Mm-mm. Looks like a goose with a little bow tie to me. <laughs> yep. Uh, his head is supposed to be facing straight, but I messed up my stitch count. So now he's looking to the side instead of straight and so um so one person one person said oh isn't that so-and-so's pattern aren't they supposed to be looking straight and i just roll that into the horrible joke of i don't do anything straight oh gotcha so i just roll with it um because this is all one piece from the top of the head all the way to the bottom this is all one piece so i didn't even realize it was looking to the side until i got all the way down here and I was not going to go back all the way to the top to start over. Mm-hmm. So I was just like wabi-sabi, right? <laughs> gotcha. So it's just like a sideways. Yeah. I mean, that's just how your product is. It's not looking straight and that's the product. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause there might be people I, who I want that type. knows that it wasn't supposed to be looking like, like it's just me and that one person, but like, it's like, here, you look at it. What's wrong with it? Yeah, I would not have known. Well, I guess you, you, them, and everyone else who might be watching this <laughs> might be listening to today's call. But it's okay. Like some people might enjoy it being sideways and kind of having like that extra goofy look. Um, uh, so yeah, cool. I made that when the uh, goose game was very popular. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've heard of it. I have not played it. What is it called? Untitled Goose? Untitled Goose Game. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It could be a, like, I could imagine that goose not looking properly. I think it's the whole point is to just wreak havoc on everything and everything. Yeah. Uh, I was in Washington and we were playing it a lot and we like, it's very open-ended. So it's very relaxing because you're just a goose and you're, it's chaos. There's no way to die. So it's just like, Oh no, let's put this rake in the lake. Oh, that guy's real mad. <laughs> Yeah. So relaxing for some reason. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Seems like you can, you know, that that's cool. Like a video game inspired art piece. Um, are you, are there any other mediums that you think are really cool that maybe you tried, but then decided it wasn't really for you? Or do you mostly stick with like the mediums that you know and love? I stick with, I stick a lot with crochet. I branched out to resin. And then I branched out to enamel pins. Um, I did, I think, like 40 shows in 2019 on top of working day jobs. So it's kind of hard to keep up with just the crochet because it is a very time-consuming task. You're looking at every piece is like a couple of hours of work. And I don't make even minimum wage on making stuff like this. So doing the resin... I can mix it. It takes me like six or seven minutes to mix. Um, 
I can make like over a hundred over a hundred dollars in product in half an hour doing mm. resin work. Um, but that's because I've learned it. I've learned how to do it. Um, obviously, your first time's not going to be the best. I'm trying to see if I have like. So this was a piece that I pulled too soon. I pulled this too soon, and now um, it was wet, and so the ear bent, and I couldn't put it back in the mold because I pulled it out, and so you can see there's like a divot in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the mica powder because it gives it this like really fun metal look, um, and then this one has gears in its eyes, so it's very fun and steampunk. And it's a pin, so you can just wear it on your lapel, and people like pins. Um, obviously, like not everybody likes plushies, so I just had to also cater to a mass audience by making something that like everybody could get. Uh, a lot of children like my stuff, but sometimes the price point isn't children friendly. Like mm -hmm. something like this is like $40, you know, not, not a lot of kids. But I also do like smaller pieces, like something like this is probably running in between five to 10 bucks, depending. But it's fun because he's like small and squishy and he's got like a lot of fun textures. For sure. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. And then where do you sell your products? So besides conventions, if somebody kind of wanted to find more about you, find some more of your art, where can they find Sanji Cat? Um, if you want to buy my stuff in person, if you want to look at it in person, I am available in one stop currently, and that is in downtown Fullerton at the Comic Book Hideout. Uh, it's ran by an amazing woman named Glynis. She's fantastic. Um, they have a shop dog. You can pet it. Who doesn't like the pet dog? Um, but they have an entire display of my crocheted stuff. They have some of my pins. They have some of my resin work. So if you want to like actually physically hold it before you buy it, please go there. Um, before COVID, I was in a bunch of other shops, but I don't know if they're going to make it through the pandemic, which is very painful. Um, I'm in negotiating uh, right before right before I hopped on here. I was in negotiating about a shop in Orange that I might be in, um, but I don't know what that's going to look like because I haven't looked over that paperwork yet. Uh, I'm in the online store, um, Perfect Humans, and I obviously have my own Etsy store called Sanji Craft because I go by Sanji and it's my craft, so you can buy it off of there. Or if you see something that I post on my Sanji Cat Instagram, you can always go to my Sanji Cat Instagram. And if you really like a piece, just message me. And uh, I got my shipping boxes over there in the back with all that messy stuff. Um, or if it's small enough, you can get one of these hot pink bubble mailers, which oh, you see it in your mail and it's pretty and it's fun. So there's always that kind of stuff, which is fun. Mm -hmm. like I just got to find a way to stand out somehow. Yeah, totally. I will um, put those in the links down below after so people will be able to find you. So that's awesome. You also do custom pieces you mentioned if people want to message you. Yes. If, if you want to message me for custom pieces, I'm always open for customs. If it's something I don't know how to do or if it's something that I'm just not interested, I will also try to hook you up with like artists who are capable of doing the the project that you so desire. Um, I don't really make humans that well, but I do know a couple of crochet artists who specialize in humans. I specialize in creatures, um, but maybe I am a creature. I don't know. I don't know if I'm human at this point. <laughs> yeah. So spe specifically, you're like a creature artist in different types of mediums, whether it's like crocheting, resin, um, some 3D printing that I think you also dabble in a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I have like my feature pins. I have I have a Cthulhu. He glows in the dark. Um, I have everybody's favorite cryptid, Mothman. And he's in a light bulb because he's a moth. And then um, I do a little bit of fan art. This is my one fan art pin that I've made from Beastars. Um, it says but shaming is over. Oh, uh, nice. Way to stay on your channel. Oh, that's okay. We believe it. I believe it. <laughs> that character yeah. is very um, sexually open. It's not a show for kids. Uh, 
I don't think I know the show. Where, where is it from? Beastars. Beastars. It's um, a slice of life kind of older high school show, and none of the characters are human. So it's kind of like an adult utopia. You got this predator prey existing in the society kind of thing. Um, there's a predator and a prey animal who are romantically interested in one another, but they have to obviously overcome the basic instinct of, do I want to eat you or do I love you enough to not want to eat you? Mm. Kind of reminds me of Zootopia. <laughs> yeah, it's like an adult Zootopia. It's, but it's a lot more episodes. Yeah, and yeah. There's some adult content. Um, there's like a black market where some of the prey animals who don't make enough money uh, illegally sell their body parts to be consumed by predators. Oh. Um, so Gosh, kind of like explores. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really dark. Yeah, Oof. well, um, definitely I, recommend Zootopia for people for an enjoying uh, societal critique, somewhat, but also wrapped up in a fun, you know, if you Disney want movie. A Disney version, Zootopia. If you want a darker version, you can go to B Stars. Gotcha. Wow. But you've been warned. <laughs> It's on, it's, it's on Netflix. Um, the thing that was attracted me to it, it has, um, it's actually made with like motion capture. So it's got very unique animation style. Like if you watch it, it's, uh, and then the opening segment is done in stop motion where they're like actual puppets and slow meat. And then they go to this like CGI stop, like motion capture kind of animation. And I've always really liked Anthro Creatures. So it immediately caught my eye. Yeah, well, I'm always interested in checking out different mediums of like art and things like that. So I would like to check it out. I think there's definitely a lot of really good shows out there and there's so many different styles. Um, so maybe I'll watch an episode and, and see how I feel. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, I guess if somebody wants to maybe explore a little bit more on their artistic side do you have any uh words of wisdom i guess to kind of wrap it all up like maybe something about i don't know just what it's like being an artist or things to look out for or any tips or recommendations you might have get thick skin because you're going to get those pe- like my i i have people all the time going my grandma does that or my child does that and like I don't know if you need that as an insult or you know or you got people who flip it over see the price tag and go oh it's not worth it it doesn't mean it's not worth it they're not your targeted audience um don't and then like if you know your piece is worth a certain amount and people try to talk you down know your worth don't give up just to make the buck don't belittle yourself know what your worth is um believe in yourself this is part of you it's not just one product they're buying they are all of the failed attempts that you did to get to where you are that's what they're paying for yeah those are some great words of wisdom like just keep doing your thing and just being gritty about it knowing that if you fail or you make a mistake, it's okay, because that's not the end I'll be on. There'll be like another attempt, there'll be another another day, another sale, another convention, uh, more things coming up in your future. So, sure. And then you also, just because you do bad at one con doesn't mean you'll do bad at all cons. That might not have been your targeted audience. Um, like, I would never recommend a person selling like, custom jewelry to sell like you know just like oh it's like I sell something similar to like Tiffany and Co and my prices are like Tiffany and Co don't go to Comic Con like you know they're going to want to buy comic book merch but go to like a fine a fine jewelry convention uh like know your targeted audience and you, you won't necessarily know what your targeted audience was I originally thought my targeted audience was anime and video game and then I decided to do a horror convention and realized I'd do better with horror and I realized I enjoyed making monsters more than I like making video game characters and there's actually like a lot of like weird crossovers for that kind of stuff 
Awesome. Yeah, those are really great tips. Well, thank you again, Sanji Cat, for being on the show today. And check out Sanji Cat's shop. Check out all the cool stuff that they're working on. Um, well, signing off as always, deep breath in together. Deep breath out. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Take care. <laughs>